What's up, everybody? Dylan here from Iceberg TV. We finally got some answers from Yuli. I'm really excited to take a look at the clip here. Um, Yuli finally explains what happened in Norway. He had the black eye. Everybody was asking questions. We didn't get a whole lot of answers. Yuli has a fractured shoulder. He's going to be missing competitive disc golf for the next two to three months. Um, according to the official diagnosis that he got from his doctors, he kind of got an MRI rushed. So it was a good thing he was able to get that done. So he knows, you know, exactly how much damage there is. He said at first, after getting in the fight, he wasn't sure if his shoulder hurt from getting slammed or if his shoulder hurt from throwing punches. So Yuli did get into a fight. And again, I wasn't really going to comment on what happened until I had the full story. I don't want to make assumptions. Yuli has been on this channel before, and I have no bad blood or spite against Yuli. Overall, to me, he seems like a pretty solid guy. He's pretty much just a straight shooter, and I do want to hear his side of the story. Again, with any story, especially with circumstances like this, there's three sides to every story. We have Yuli's side, we have the other guy's side, and then somewhere in the middle we have the full, just bare truth. So this is Yuli's truth, and I think it's worth listening to what Yuli has to say. Let's take a look at the clip. So yeah. I'm going to go over this story one time here on the podcast, and then I'm going to address a couple of issues afterwards that I feel like um, need to be addressed as well. And then we can move on to the great show of Gannon Burr and Ricky Wysocki and Absolutely. talking about Holland and the great tournaments. This is what happened, okay? Well, what is it? Uh, Norway. Play a great tournament. Take seventh place. Decide we're going to go out and celebrate. People who know me on tour know that I do not do this. I am strictly business after every single round. I'm typically doing commentary, and when I'm not, I'm sitting at home chilling. I decide, hey, you know what? Norway just had a great tournament. Sure, let me go out with the fellas. We do this. Have a great time. Fantastic. We shut this place down in the middle of Nor in Oslo, the city, okay? Shut the place down. We're all outside. I'm talking to a couple, two people. Okay. Conversation is going great. Nothing's really happening. Random guy comes up to me, accuses me of doing something that I did not do. I tell the guy, no, I didn't do that. He insists. I tell him again, no, I did not do that. He then puts his hands on me and gives me a little shove. I tell the guy, don't touch me basically get away from me in in the kindest words that I can say on here. He then gives me a full shove. I give him a full shove back. That's it. That's what happens. Okay. He backs down. He goes, Whoa, that's it's not like that. Blah, 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 blah. End of the story, right? No, not end of the story. Some other random guy comes behind this guy. And in so many words says, I want to fight you. I chirp back at this guy because I'm fired up at this point. I just got shoved, shoved the dude back. Other guy comes in, wants a piece. I chirp back at this guy. He attacks me. Okay. So I don't know if a lot of you guys watching the channel have ever been in this situation. I know I've been in this situation and I've taken both routes when I've been in this situation. When someone's chirping at you, someone's acting like they want to fight you for whatever reason. You have two options. You can either try to defuse the situation, you can back down. That typically doesn't happen when alcohol is involved, and I'm assuming alcohol would have been heavily involved in the situation on both parties. Or you can stick your chest out, you can sort of defend your honor, you can, you know, put yourself out there and say, hey, I'm willing to take this fight. If this guy wants to fight me, I'm willing to fight him back. And Yuli instead of trying to defuse the situation, clearly it has escalated enough to the point where he's like, he's all fired up. He's like, I'm going to fight this guy. So in this situation, given Yuli is a professional athlete, he should not really be putting his body on the line. He made a mistake. He shouldn't have chirped back, but he did. And I do respect the fact that, you know, he's telling us the truth that, hey, I chirped back. He probably could have talked himself out of this fight and I'm also wondering, where are the rest of his friends? Where are the rest of the boys? And why haven't we heard much from those guys? But let's let you continue. This all happens in 45 seconds, probably. The whole story, 45 seconds. I don't know if you guys have ever been in a, in a fight or ever been jumped, but it happens pretty damn quick. Things don't go this guy's way quickly, okay? We'll just say that. 
people kind of break it up. All of a sudden, I'm in a group of people who are not only trying to break it up, but also throwing blows my way. Okay. I'm getting pulled, I'm getting punched, and I'm getting kicked. I get slammed. I. Where are the boys when this is happening? When I hear this, my mind immediately goes one of two ways. You lose either leaving out pivotal chunks of the story, or he needs to find some new boys. Because if this is a situation with me and my boys, and my boys getting in an altercation, I am, I am putting myself in the fire. I'm going to try and prevent my friend and captain and teammate from getting his butt kicked by six guys. And sometimes this can end well, and sometimes it cannot end well. But you can't just let your friend get bullied like that and get beat up like that. So I'm, I'm wondering where there's, there's a gap here where I don't fully understand why the rest of the guys there that he was celebrating with, where the heck are they? Where the heck did they go? Or what pivotal parts of the story is Yuli leaving out of the equation? I get back up, and as I'm getting back up, I get clipped in the face by somebody who kicks me. Okay, I get back up. Original guy's straight in front of me. I go forward. Another guy picks me up and then pile drives me. That's where I get the injury from my shoulder. I get back up. Somebody then gets me and pulls me out of there, and I get to safety. That's what happened, okay? And there's a lot of, like, namelessness going on. Somebody grabs me. Somebody picks me up. Somebody does this. Somebody does that. There's a lot of missing characters that I think are really important in this story. I'd love to know who he was with. Where were they? What were they doing during this whole altercation? That is probably something we will never know the answer to unless someone who was there comes forward and tells us the full truth. And when I say I'm getting clipped, I was getting clipped from the side. I'm getting clipped from this side. And I got kicked in the face and slammed two times in the matter of, let's say, 15 seconds, probably less than that. It happens all fast. So the rumor train of all this stuff about me attacking a security guard never happened. One of the guys who slammed me was a security guard who came up from behind me in a group of people who were attacking me and picked me up and slammed me. I later found out that he was probably friends with this original guy. Okay. I know this because I came back. I came back because I lost my wedding ring, which was on my necklace. I got stung by a wasp or a hornet or something the day before we were playing this little course. My hand swelled up, put it on my necklace. It got ripped off. A few of us came back to look for my wedding ring. Three of the guys who attacked me were still there. I know mm -hmm. this because I remember seeing one of them. And the other guy had my hat on, and when he saw me, he quickly threw my hat over in the bushes. I saw him. I didn't address it because I was just looking for my wedding ring, and I didn't want to get in another fight. And so I go up to these guys, and I'm like, hey, bygones be bygones. I lost my wedding ring. Will you guys help me find it? They were like, yeah, absolutely. Squashed. Now, people are saying, okay, so this is... So these are the kind of people that where you can go back and revisit them and they're willing to just squash the beef after a brief conversation, I do think Yuli could have diffused the situation before it escalated to a full-on physical altercation. Again, clearer minds prevailed in the follow-up interaction, but during that initial interaction, I'm assuming there was a lot of alcohol involved, emotions were flying, everybody's judgment was to some point impaired, but Yuli likely should have just diffused the situation, especially if his boys weren't going to help him or the people he, he came to this party with. They weren't going to help him fight. Like, he should have just diffused the situation from the beginning. So hopefully that's a good learning lesson for Yuli and then a good learning lesson for all of you watching the video. This is typically something that you would, like, uh, get a lawsuit, policemen, all this different stuff. Here's my thought process through the whole thing. I didn't feel like I got that hurt. I felt like I got pretty lucky. I got slammed. My shoulder hurt a little bit, but it wasn't anything too crazy. I got clipped by the kick. That wasn't too crazy. And I felt like I was absolutely fine. Fine enough to even go back and look for my wedding ring. We leave there the next day. We wake up and I'm like, ooh, shoulder feels a little, a little bad, but it should be good. I thought that my shoulder was hurt because I was throwing a punch. 
That's why I'm like, oh, I probably haven't done that in a long time. I probably pulled something in my shoulder. This is going to heal pretty quickly, right? Another day goes by. I go to a physical therapist in um, at the European Open. He tells me, yeah, it's pretty bad, but we'll do these things. You might be good to go by the European Open. So I rest, ice, rest, ice, rest, ice, can't do it. P- don't play the European Open, obviously. Come back home. Text Brody, hey, I should probably um, let people know what's going on the next episode. We start the episode, never comes up. I don't think anything of it, right? In that episode, I make my light dim. Now, this is what's hilarious to me, okay? Typically, when you have a black eye, you know what you do? You wear sunglasses out in public. That's a typical thing you don't just go out like a ufc fighter like hey look at me look at my big black eye let's talk about this every single second wear the sunglasses for the president's cup come here still have a black eye don't want to go on my podcast with a black eye so i dim the lights i i totally agree with everything he's saying here um the podcast is not there to for you to talk about some real life drama. They don't talk about real life drama. They don't talk about anybody's personal lives on the show. So why would you get started by talking about personal lives in this situation? It just wasn't really the time or the place. But as the story continued to escalate, Yuli definitely needed to clear the air. He also did post on Instagram and I considered talking about it then. But before I even talked about the story, I wanted to at least get all the information. So I do appreciate Yuli coming out and giving us as many details as he's willing to give us. But I really would like to hear someone else's account of the story as well, um, just so we can put some pieces together and hear the full truth. But again, that's, that's just my opinion on where we're at so far. Let's let Yuli continue. This is a normal thing people do. If you're on TV, you think these people go on there with a black eye and do their show. No, they usually put makeup on or something. I wasn't going to address this situation until I knew exactly what was wrong with my shoulder because I didn't know if I was going to be playing the European Open, and then I didn't know if I was going to be playing the Ledgestone Open. I thought I honestly thought I was going to be completely fine. I set up a doctor's appointment the day that I got back home. They expedited an MRI. I got that done. I found out the day all this crap blew up and, and somebody de-resolutionized a photo of me doing my podcast and then posting all this nonsense. Now, there are a billion different versions of this story, and I don't really care. I get that. comes with the territory. I'm going to get people talking about this, talking about that, talking about whatever. Last thing I'm, well, I got two more things to say. One, my fault. I'm not the person who's going to blame anything or do whatever. I'm the person at fault for my success, me and God. And I'm the person for my, when bad things happen, my fault. Okay. My fault. Other thing I want to address Norway is my favorite place to go. It is awesome. The people are incredible. Okay. The disc golf is incredible. The disc golf community is incredible. So when I see all this kind of hate comments towards this place on my behalf, I appreciate the support, but let's take it somewhere else. Not there. Okay. Another thing. Um, I do appreciate the fact that Yuli is coming out and taking accountability and saying that this is my own fault. Again, we're not hearing the full story, so we don't know what was said. We don't know per se, who threw the first punch. We don't know who crossed the line first. But Yuli knows that the situation was his own fault. He's taking accountability, and there's a lot of respect for that. We all make mistakes. And the best thing to do when you make a mistake is to just own up to it. Do your best to make the correction in the future. Again, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I doubt we are ever going to see Yuli in that fool me twice situation. I doubt we see Yuli get into another fight during the rest of his disc golf career. Now, does he get into a fight as an angry pickleballer in his 50s and 60s? Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. But he's definitely going to learn from this situation. And once he's no longer on tour as a professional athlete, our per- his personal life becomes a lot less of our business. But as he is the team captain of Discraft, he is the... You know, right alongside Paul Macbeth, the face of Discraft Discs, 
A lot of people look up to him. He should never put himself in this type of situation. And so the fact that he did put himself in the situation is very unfortunate. But again, he's taking accountability, and that is the most important thing. This is for the other podcasts out there that want to get in on my business, okay? I like it. You have a right to do this. I want you to make stories, and I want you to be successful. I want you to have a a successful podcast or show or whatever you do. But in the disc golf community, it's pretty tight-knit. You have direct access to me, and I've messaged several of these people personally and said, hey, next time, next time you want to break a story and talk about this, all this stuff, you can talk to me. I'm one message away. You can get the actual facts, no problem. I also commented on one of the comment sections of one of these, one of these things on YouTube. I won't say who it is because I don't really, it doesn't matter. They deleted my comments, basically saying the same thing. I got no hate towards them, nothing. I'm going to watch their show next week. It's going to be awesome. I'm um, Just to push back on what he said um, a little bit, I do think it's a good thing to go to Yuli and hear what he has to say, but he also clearly is holding some information close to his chest. And when you ask him to be the forefront of the explanation, you put him in control of your story. So if it's your platform and you're having Yuli on, you're giving him the lead to tell his version of the story. So I do understand why other channels would have commented on the situation beforehand. I decided to wait because I'm not big on talking about people's personal lives. Obviously, his shoulder's injured. This matters. Um, we needed to know why he can't play Worlds, why he won't be able to play USDGC when he's missing majors. We know Yuli is the guy that the one thing he wants in this planet is to win a major. And because of this altercation, he's now no longer probably going to get that opportunity this year. And I honestly think if Yuli is going to win a major, it's going to be USDGC. I think that's where he has the best chance. And I just, even if he is able to play, he's clearly not going to be at 100% unless he's just, you know, masking the pain with medication which again can be another slippery slope altogether, which I likely wouldn't expect Yuli to put himself in that situation either. So again, I, I do get what Yuli's saying, but I think the other podcasts and channels do have the right to speak on it. Um, once they give, you know, once they break the news, then have Yuli on to tell his side of the story. But again, Yuli's side of the story doesn't seem to be the full story, so I can understand why the other channels might have covered this um, before we had all of the information at hand. I'm sure. But if you want to have a legitimate source, go to the person. That's me. You can go to these other people and hear all these side stories or whatever, and that's fine. You can do that. I have no problem with that. But it might help if you add the actual person, and it's not that hard to find me. It and I, I can attest to this. I have had Yuli on the channel before. Um, he was very nice. He was personable. He was easy to schedule with. I did an interview um, we talked about some of his sports psychology stuff, some of his injury status stuff, and he was a relatively open book, and we went over a lot of stuff in his personal life in the interview, and we talked about a lot of different things, and I can agree that Yuli is, in fact, very accessible, um, especially when it's, you know, advantageous for him to link up and interact with you. He's going to be even more proactive to make sure that he makes that happen, and he made that happen um, for me in this channel. I remember getting off work. I was really excited. I had all these questions laid out. Yuli showed up on time. Um, you know, of course, we had a few technical issues before we got started. That's just part of the ball game. But he wound up following through with the interview. We had a great interview. You guys really enjoyed it, those of you that saw it. And yeah, so I totally agree with what Yuli is saying here. It really isn't. Next thing. And I'm going to say this louder for the people in the back, okay? I'm not the person who's going to not defend my name. It's never going to happen. That's not who I am. I'm going to stand up for myself every single time. So we can just wash that. Okay. Moving forward. I'm probably not going to be partying at all lately. It's probably, I'm probably going to take a nice break. The last time that I went out and partied, and this is true on tour was the European open black party the year before. So all this stuff about Paul being a lush and going out and doing all this thing. Nope. I'm strictly about my business. That's what I'm about. I'm about making good content for you guys, practicing my butt off, 
making good Jomez footage for you guys, speaking my mind. That's the last thing I'm going to say about this. I appreciate all the support and all the love that flowed through too, because even though there was a lot of negative con comments, there was more positivity coming my way, which I appreciate an update on my injury. I should be back in about two to three months. I'm hoping I can make a return for the USDGC. The fracture that I received was right where the um, rotator cuffs meets my other bone. And so my rotator cuff, my rotator tendons pull on where the fracture is. So it's a little bit worse than just having a fracture, but it's a lot better than having a torn rotator cuff, which is what I thought it was in the, in the first place. Now there are details about this thing that aren't probably going to get released. There probably are, but that's my business and that's nobody else's business. So that's that. Um, again, that's kind of what I was saying the whole time. There's details about this that we will never know unless we find another source who was there. There were at least, you know, according to Yuli, you know, four to six other people there. So there are other people that can explain the story. And that's something that may come out in the future if that, you know, those individuals see this and they feel like they want to fill in some gaps to let us know the full story of what happened. Then again, we have Yuli's story, we have the other person's story, and then somewhere in the middle is the truth. Um, but I do appreciate Yuli being a straight shooter. He was fully honest the whole time. He didn't make anything up. I don't think he lied. Um, I hope he tries to set a better example in the future and not put himself in this situation. There's a lot of kids that look up to Yuli. There's a lot of pros that you look up to Yuli. Everybody on Team Discraft should be looking up to Yuli. Um, he's a fine businessman. He's a heck of a player. Like I said, I've collaborated with Yuli and have done an interview with him on this channel, and he was extremely nice to me. He was easy to get a hold of. He was personable. He was receptive. I have nothing but good things to say about Yuli as a person, and I think he's telling his truth. Now, again, those few details that he's leaving out could be completely pivotal to the dynamic of the situation, but until someone comes out and gives us more details, we need to take Yuli's word for it. Overall, I mean, I don't question Yuli's character. I think he works extremely hard on and off the course. He's great on Jomez. He's a really good and professional team captain for Discraft. There's not really much else that I can say about Yuli. I don't have a ton of experience um, interpersonally with him, but my interactions with him have all been positive. So anyway, I just wanted to give my opinion on that, and I wanted to kind of cover it after the full story had been explained. Um, again, I, when I saw, originally saw his Instagram post, I was like, man, I should cover this. This is like a really big deal. And I was like, Ooh, maybe I shouldn't cover it. We don't really have enough details and I don't want to make things up. I don't want to spread misinformation. I don't want to just drag out rumors. But now that we have Yuli's truth out there in the open, I feel like it's appropriate for me to comment on it. Um, this channel for a long time was a news source for disc golf. And sometimes I get back into that and sometimes I don't. But I think when we have really important stories to talk about, I think it's important for this channel to at least comment on them from time to time. You guys seem to enjoy my opinion on this type of stuff. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Iceberg TV, signing out and take care.